Okay, so today you're going to be using a site called Delta Math. Um, your login information is on Schoology, um, and once you log in, you're going to see an area with some assignments. You'll see me highlight the two different assignments here, finding the slope graphically and finding the slope from points. Now, you have a worksheet um, with two sides. One side is the slope uh, graphically or the graphical the graphic slope page and the other is the point page um, I'm going to show you how to complete the graphic page um, the point page is self-explanatory that, that you should have no problems with that but if we take a look at the graphic page once I click here now I already did an example um, but across the top you'll see me highlight here you'll see your percent your score how you've done so far okay um, you have a back button so you can go back and check old activities a give up and a show example. Okay, so what our directions tell us to do, it says draw a line representing the run and a line representing the rise of a line. State the slope of the line in simplest form. So basically what we want is we want you to find two points that cross grid lines. We don't want any decimal ordered pair crossing areas. We want where does it cross these grid lines? And we're going to find a rise and a run. And this is just creating a rise and run triangle is basically what's happening here. So you're going to use this website. I'll show you what it'll look like on the website. But taking those two points that I just had, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mouse and you're going to click at a, a, uh, an intersection of two ordered pairs, or excuse me, of um, two grid lines. And I do, all I'm doing is dragging up. So I clicked at one, four, or excuse me, one negative four, and I drug up two spaces. And then I'm going to click and drag to the right two spaces. Okay, so all I did was I took my mouse and I pl plopped it down here and I clicked and held where you see that red dot. And I drug up, oops, I drug up and I let go at this point. So that created my rise of two. Okay, and then I, let me take a blue. Then I took my mouse and I plotted a point here because that's a, if remember, with our rise and run, with our slope triangles, we can only go vertically and horizontally across the grid lines. Okay, so I'm going to click to my point where you see the blue there at 1, negative 2, and I drug to the right two spaces, and that gave me my run. Okay, so when you're finding your rise over your run, you want to label it with the, the lines on your page on the website. And then you're going to take your numbers. My rise over run was 2 over 2. You always simplify that down. I can divide each by 2. And I get 1 over 1. Okay. <clears throat> then what you're going to do is in your answer area, you're going to write a 1 over 1. And you'll see it down at the bottom. Now as for your, <clears throat> as for your page in the slope review, what I want you to do on that is you're going to have to create your own coordinate plane. I gave you the grid. The reason I did not put the x and y axis is because from one graph to the next, you might have to adjust. So let's label our x and our y's. We can assume that our intervals are by ones unless you mark something different. But what I want you to do is I want you to recreate this graph. So I had a point at 1, negative 4. And my other point was 3, negative 2. And I want you to draw the line. Okay, so you're basically recreating the line on your screen. And then I want you to show your rise and your run. Okay. So you're going to label your rise and run. Now, you might have gone 1 and 1. You didn't have to go 2 and 2. You might have actually gone 4 and 4, or th rise 3, run 3, rise 1, run 1. You do not have to do the 2 and 2 that I did. You might have done something different. But what I want you to do on the paper, as I said, you went, we went up 2, and we went to the right 2, so my slope was 2 over 2, which equaled 1 over 1. This is the work that I want to see on your paper. So you, whatever you did on the screen, I want you to recreate on your paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our answer as 1 over 1. You'll see all the, all the writing disappeared. Um, so I have my, my slope triangle drawn, and I have my 1 over 1. I'll hit Submit Answer. It says, are you sure you want to submit the solution? And I say, yes. It tells me I'm correct. And it shows me up one over one, positive slope. Slope equals rise over run, one over one. OK. 
Okay. Now, so that is one thing I want you to add to the side. So let's take a look at, again and see what we have, um, what we should have drawn here. You have your coordinate plane. Okay. And it was one negative four and two negative three. Okay. So if we have a line that looks like this, my, my rise and run, I did rise two, run two, up two, right two, slope was two over two, which equaled one over one. The only thing I want you to add here would be positive slope. Okay, so there will probably be something on your page I'll add it to the page about is a positive slope or negative slope, and you'll, you'll label that. Okay, so number one on your paper is going to be what we did just now. You will have five problems to do on your own. Okay, so um, I decided we'll actually go ahead and take a look at the finding slope from the points activity. So what you're going to do is if you take a look at your left side of your screen in the delta math, you'll hit the back button, and that's going to take us back to the main area, and you're going to click finding the slope from points. And what's going to happen is you'll be given a problem, so our problem is, what is the slope of the line that passes through the points 4, 8, and 3, 3? So what you're going to do on the right-hand side, if you take a look at your paper, um, number 1 here, you're going to fill in the numbers that you're given. So 4 and 8, 3 and 3. Okay. So whatever numbers you're given, you're going to do this one with me right now. So everybody's number 1 is going to be the same problem. You have a couple options. You could graph this and figure it out from there. However, graphing takes a very long time, and that's why we have the slope formula. Okay, and um, I'm going to make that look a little bit nicer for you. If it was me, I would definitely write this at the top of your page. You will be using it repeatedly. So our slope formula is where we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What this means is the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. So if you need to add a little notation, so this is the first y, excuse me, second y first and I'm, I'm out of room so you'll have to make yours look a little nicer second y first y second x first x up to you if you want to add that in there if you have a little more room but that's why you see that that little two and the little one they're just notating which order we're looking at <clears throat> so if we take a look at our first problem <clears throat> my second y is a three my first y is an eight now I could say 3 minus 8, okay, second y minus first y, over second x minus the first x. One thing to take note of, if you look at my fraction here, see the 3 and the 3, how that's an ordered pair? And 8 and 4 is this ordered pair? That's a way to double check that you did everything correctly and that you didn't mistake some sort of order, okay? Now you will want to add the opposite because we have larger numbers as the second number in our subtraction problem. So 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5. 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. A negative divided by negative is positive, so this becomes 5 over 1 or 5. Okay, so if we take a look at... <clears throat> at our answer on, on the left hand side and you're going to see the, the work disappear on the right so if you need to copy that down pause it um, but now on the left hand side I'm going to enter 5 over 1 are you sure I want to submit yes tells me I'm correct and it actually shows me my 3 minus 8 so this is the exact work that you could have written on your paper now there's one thing I want to show you on the side really quick is we had our numbers 4, 8, and 3, 3. I could have done y1 minus y2. 
over x1 minus x2. And I want you to see what happens. 8 minus 3 is 5. 4 minus 3 is 1. That equals 5. Do I get the same answer? I do. The order does not matter. However, if you start with the first y for the numerator, you have to start with the first x for the denominator. I still need to be able to look at this and see 4, 8 was an ordered pair, and so was 3, 3. Okay, so they do tell you y2 minus y1 because 99% of the time you're going to end up with uh, it coming out better in terms of positives and negatives, but once in a while it doesn't work that way. So this is all you're going to do. I gave you the first answers. Um, you'll go in, you'll have five problems for each that you need to get finished, and that's it.